In a few weeks, The Simpsons is going to hit its milestone 700th episode. Yeah, you heard that right, 700 episodes. Hitting even 100 episodes is a massive achievement for any animated show, and The Simpsons has done that seven times over. Regardless of how you feel about the show these days, you cannot deny that this is astounding. So it should come as no surprise that over the years, there have been some Simpsons episode ideas that have fallen to the wayside. Now, obviously without being in those writers' rooms, we could never know all of these pitched but never produced ideas, but thanks to the internet and some of the more forthcoming writers who worked on the show over the years, there are a good handful of unused premises that we do know about. Some give us as little as a title, while others we know were even written to completion before being rejected for one reason or another. So first we'll explore some of the less fleshed out ideas before we dive into the juicy stuff. Heck, there have even been Simpsons spin-off ideas that never quite got off the ground, and I've invited none other than Lydia from The Simpsons Theory to help us break those down. So join us as we explore the Simpsons episodes that could have been in. So the vast majority of these unproduced episode titles were given to us over the years by Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein, who began writing for The Simpsons on season 4 and also served as showrunners for season 7 and 8. We'll just go backwards in time from here and break them all down. First to the year 2017. Josh Weinstein tweets a photograph of a wall of ideas on index cards from The Simpsons writer's room circa 1996. He even transcribed them for us. Some of them seem to have evolved into other episode ideas or been used years later, but the ones that stand out as having never been used in any form are Bart the Locksmith, Marge the cartoonist, Wacky Races, The Naked and the Ned, Mo Gets Caller ID, State Fair, Homer Finds Marge's Old Love Letters, Burns and Smithers Love Triangle, New Speed Limit, Science Class Robot Battle, Fried Cake, and Springfield Donates White House Christmas Tree. Some of these sound like pretty typical early Simpsons hijinks. I can imagine Bart's troublemaking nature helped him bolster his lockpicking skills, which could lead him to becoming a locksmith. Marge the cartoonist may have evolved into the season 7 episode The Day the Violence Died, which also must have been written around this era and focused on the cartoonist Chester Lampwick who created Itchy. It also may have strayed too closely to Itchy and Scratchy and Marge when Marge's input fundamentally changed Itchy and Scratchy. Wacky Races is just an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon, and I imagine they would have had a fun time parodying the format. Hey, maybe this idea ended up being the seeds for the game Simpsons Road Rage? The Naked and the Ned is a hard one to derive any info from, but I can only imagine how it might have gone. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Mo gets caller ID seems like a really obvious but fun idea given Bart's history of crank calling him. And given how Mo reacted when Bart pretended to be Jimbo, this could have gone a few ways. You just made your second mistake, buddy boy. Obviously, this couldn't be done today. Did Mo ever actually get a cell phone? State Fair is super nondescript, but the Simpsons did go to a State Fair in season 11, Saddle Sore Galactica. Homer finds Marge's old love letters feels like it could have gone a few ways. I could have seen this being another flashback episode or possibly just a story of Homer being insecure in his marriage, or maybe both. It feels like a great framework for a flashback episode, though. Burns and Smithers' love triangle is an interesting one, though at the time they were still playing up the jokes about Smithers' sexuality, and it's possible they didn't want to step on all that. Although I guess it could have been a love triangle in that Smithers and someone else were in love with Burns. Damn, did you know that Smithers didn't come out as gay until season 27? Feels like I should have been way sooner. They also had already done a Love Triangle episode with Burns and Grandpa, so maybe this felt redundant. New speed limit? Who knows? I imagine that a bunch of people in town might have gotten outraged because they were getting speeding tickets after a speed limit change. This honestly sounds like something that just happened to a Simpsons writer and got put up on the wall. Science class robot battle really intrigues me, especially because this is circa 1996, a solid four years before BattleBots became a TV sensation. Though BattleBots obviously didn't invent robot battles, and the Simpsons writers are just the type of nerds who would be really into these real-life robot battling competitions. The writers did eventually get around to a similar premise in season 15's I Annoyed Grunt Bot. What a title. Fried cake. I mean, your guess is as good as mine on this one. Doesn't get much more vague than that. And finally, Springfield donates White House Christmas tree. So this one I did a little research for, and as it turns out, it's a time-honored tradition for towns to donate Christmas trees to the White House. Typically, the First Lady will choose a theme for the tree decorations, which is displayed in the White House's Blue Room. Though our most recent former First Lady, apparently, wasn't a huge fan of Christmas. Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a f about Christmas stuff and decoration. I can imagine the story revolving around Springfield donating a less than optimal tree and bringing shame upon the town. I wonder if this would have included the first lady at the time, Hillary Clinton, a completely non-controversial political figure. Now let's jump back five more years. In 2012, to celebrate the 500th episode of The Simpsons, Bill Oakley tweeted out his top 10 Simpsons episodes that were pitched, discussed, or written, but never produced, complete with writer attributions. Wow, just a mere 200 episodes ago, a much simpler 
simpler time. 10. Homer Sexual Fantasy by Dan Greeny. 9. Homer Privately Tells Bart He Loves Him Best by Ken Keeler. 8. Bart Gets 144 Jeeps by Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein. 7. Homer the Narcoleptic by David X. Cohen. 6. 30 Simpsons by David M. Stern. 5. Amusement Park by Matt Groening. 4. Homer vs. Dr. Hibbert on the issue of race by Greg Daniels. 3. Homer's $1,000 suit from an index card left on a bulletin board by Sam Simon. 2. Lisa the Cyan Topterin by George Meyer. And number 1. Prince Comes to Springfield by Conan O'Brien. So some of these we know quite a bit about, others we can derive some fun information from, and others are just straight up mysteries. Homer's sexual fantasy and amusement park don't really give us much to work with. We know there have been episodes that focused on Homer and Marge's fantasies before, and it's possible that amusement park didn't work since they had already done Itchy and Scratchy Land. Homer privately tells Bart he loves him best really just sounds like a kernel of an idea, not a full episode, but it was apparently by Ken Keeler, and if y'all have seen my Futurama finales video, you know how I feel about Ken Keeler. Homer the Narcoleptic sounds simple enough, and we've seen Homer fall asleep in important places like work, church, while driving, and wouldn't you know it, nearly 20 years later, a season 27 episode diagnosed him with narcolepsy. Though this came after Bill Oakley originally tweeted this out. Big thanks to LS Mark's deranged six-hour Simpsons ranking for tipping me off about this one. Go try to find my one-minute cameo in that thing. Homer's $1,000 suit seems like it could have been fun. We've definitely seen Homer make impulse purchases before, and I could see him being enamored with a fancy suit, though I don't know if they could have done it better than the rest of the development. Where's the happens, I can spill, spill some on my $3,000 suit. Come on! Homer vs. Dr. Hibbert on the issue of race was allegedly a tough nut to crack for the writers who were afraid to mishandle the subject. Greg Daniels is a great writer though, and went on to tackle a lot of delicate cultural subjects in King of the Hill. Bart gets 144 jeeps sounds absurd at first, but it seems to stem from the old urban legend that after World War II, the military was selling surplus army jeeps for $50 a pop. The catch? They come disassembled in a crate and you have to put them together yourself. The urban legend proved to be exactly that, a legend, but the idea does make for a fun Simpsons premise. Impulse buying a bunch of Jeeps seems right up Bart's alley. After all, we've seen him use a fraudulent credit card to buy tons of stuff in the K-9 Mutiny. It kind of has the same energy as when he won the radio contest and chose an elephant over the $10,000 cash prize, too. 30 Simpsons was apparently an idea that was reworked over and over by writer Dan Greeny, allegedly going through as many as four or five drafts. In this episode, the Simpsons would have gotten new neighbors who can be described as yuppies, living a much trendier lifestyle than Homer and Marge. Homer would become enamored and attempt to adopt their lifestyle before realizing his current family situation is all he needs. Some people have pointed out that this sounds similar to the season 24 episode, The Day the Earth Stood Cool, where the Simpsons get cool hipster neighbors from Portland, which is where all the clips I played over the sequence come from. Hey, B-roll is hard for an unproduced episodes video. Cut me some slack. The last few examples are probably the most interesting and contain the most substantial pieces of information for any unproduced episodes, but before we dive into those, I want to turn it over to Lydia from The Simpsons Theory to break down The Simpsons spin-offs that never happened. Lake it away, Tidia. I'm, I mean, t take it, take it away, Lydia. Thanks, Johnny. So, in addition to numerous unproduced episodes, there have also been talks of a few Simpsons spin-off shows that almost came close to happening. One of these was going to be called The Tales from Springfield, which would have focused on other colorful characters from the town. The idea came up while writing the brilliant season seven episode 22 short films about Springfield. You know, the one that sparked a thousand Steam Town memes. Seymour, the house is on fire! No, mother, it's just the Northern Lights. And as it goes, there were so many ideas while writing that one episode that they thought about compiling it into its very own show. Each episode would have been compiled into three short stories, an episode set in the future and a story about a background character that was not tied into the Simpsons family at all. And on paper, it makes a lot of sense. Springfield is packed to the brim with memorable, well-developed characters with potential to have their own standalone storylines. And as I thought about it, I often wondered what happened to the characters while the Simpsons family weren't around. Could we see Fat Tony have his own secretive beef with Mayor Quimby in a JFK-style mob episode? And I'm sure there's loads of adventures Barney could have got up to while intoxicated at Moe's bar. Because let's face it, that place looks like a good time. I think the possibilities and ideas for this particular show would have been endless. And it seems that Matt Groening may have had the same sentiments. The Simpsons creator explained that they didn't have enough manpower to create such a huge show. 
So that's one that got scrapped. Another proposed spin-off was going to focus on everyone's favourite TV clown, Krusty the Clown. The show was planned at the peak of The Simpsons popularity in the 90s. Grading even went as far as writing the script. In the script, Krusty moves to LA to host his own talk show. And a running gag was that he was going to live on a house on stilts and there were beavers at the bottom that were going to be gnawing through the stilts. A little random, but all right. However, the fact that it was meant to be live action caused several issues. The network pointed out just how expensive it would be to hire trained beavers, or even mechanical beavers. It seems that grading was really committed to this gag. So contract negotiations ultimately stalled and grading moved on to develop Futurama, which I think we can all agree is probably for the best. And what if I was to tell you that Troy McClure was going to get his own movie? Yes, the hit star you may remember from the Planet of the Apes musical and Erotic Adventures of Hercules almost starred in his very own live action movie. Phil Hartman, who voiced the character, said that he would love nothing more than to make the film and was even prepared to buy the rights himself in order to make it happen. And despite the show's staff eagerness to write the film, Groening said that the project never got further than enthusiasm, which I think is a real damn shame. It may have explained why Troy McClure is so obsessed with fish. But anyway, they were just some of the Simpsons spin-offs that didn't actually, but almost happened. But they didn't, they were cancelled. So over to you, Johnny. Thanks, Lydia. If y'all haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to The Simpsons Theory. It's a seriously great Simpsons-centric channel, and I promise you won't regret it. The last few unproduced Simpsons ideas are pretty big ones, and a couple we mentioned earlier in the Oakley tweets. All three are ideas I desperately want to see explored. Lisa the Scientopteran is one that's been talked about a couple times. Back in 2005, Weinstein and Oakley did a Q&A in the forums at nohomers.net. Dang, before the term AMA was even adopted. A simpler time. Here was something Oakley said about an unproduced season 8 Simpsons episode. A hilarious and fully worked out story by George Meyer. I can't reveal the subject matter here, but we never went forward with it because of one, legal ramifications, and two, the fact that at least a couple of people on the staff slash cast would have felt personally attacked by the episode and we just didn't want to deal with the fallout. But it was hilarious and George is the funniest writer to ever live. So while he didn't reveal this information here, he did reveal the title Lisa the Scientopteran in his 2012 tweets, and I think the implications are clear. This would have been an episode focused on a particular religion that has garnered a lot of controversy in legal trouble over the years. I personally don't want any legal trouble, so I'll just call it Scientom Cruzology. Yeah, that'll protect me. It appears the episode would have focused around Lisa becoming fed up with Christianity or religion, something we've seen in a couple different ways like in Lisa the Skeptic and She of Little Faith, but this seems as though it would have led her to a group that is very much like Cyan Tom Cruzology. And the fear of legal ramifications were totally fair. Cyan Tom Cruzology went after South Park pretty hard after they focused an episode on the religion, though they ultimately failed because apparently nobody can take down South Park. This is an episode I would have really loved to see, but ultimately, I totally understand their stance. Another idea that has apparently been knocked around by Granding himself since the mid-90s was Symptasia, a completely dialogueless episode parodying Disney's 1940 masterpiece Fantasia. It seems the biggest obstacle with this episode was copyright, but also the sheer difficulty of writing, planning, and storyboarding an episode of this nature. It's a massive undertaking and understandably was pushed aside due to workload. The show has had many nods to Fantasia over the years and once in a really cool Disney-centric couch gag. While these are all fun nods, it would have been a amazing to see a fully realized 22 minute Fantasia parody. Maybe we'll still get it one day, now that Disney owns The Simpsons. And the final unproduced episode we're gonna cover is easily the one I most wanna see, Prince Comes to Springfield. This was apparently written for season four and was a follow-up to the incredible but still controversial Stark Raving Dad from season three, also known as the Michael Jackson episode. Stark Raving Dad has since been removed from Disney Plus because of Michael Jackson's involvement, but controversy aside, this is an incredible episode in which a man named Leon Kampowski believes he is Michael Jackson and comes to live with the Simpsons. At the end of the episode, Leon stops the whole Michael Jackson act and leaves Springfield. This follow-up was apparently developed by Conan O'Brien and would see the return of Kampowski to Springfield, but this time believing he's pop sensation and sexual icon, Prince. The episode was apparently written in its entirety, and there was only one thing that prevented it from happening. 
Prince. Apparently, when the script was given to him, he was not a fan of the episode and passed, effectively killing the story. It's a shame because I imagine this would have been another top tier episode of The Simpsons. In fact, showrunner Al Jean released a couple of scripted sequences via Twitter. I highly recommend reading them because they are seriously hilarious. A little glimpse into a golden era Simpsons episode that could have been. I really hope we get to read the rest of the script someday. And those are all the unproduced Simpsons episodes and ideas that are publicly known, or at least that I know of. There are bound to be dozens, if not hundreds of more scrapped ideas over the course of The Simpsons 30 plus year run. Maybe one day we'll learn about some more. I want to say thanks again to Lydia from The Simpsons Theory for joining me in this video. Please go check out her channel. She's blowing up and rightfully so. Comment below if you know any Simpsons what ifs that I may have missed. Do all that subscribing, liking business, and stay tuned for more. Peace. Johnny to challenge.